Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my epic rant on the 2010 remake, The Karate Kid. Now, I'm not going to call it a reboot because it's not a reboot. This is a remake. And this is one of the laziest remakes I've honestly seen. Uh, this is so lazy, it's unbelievable. This is the exact same film as the 1984 movie, with only very minor differences in terms of the setting, the names of certain characters, and just a few little things. Other than that, it's the same fucking film as the 1984 movie, but a million times worse. And it got a pass for some reason when it came out in theaters. And it made the most money out of any film in the Karate Kid franchise. And I think you might notice that the lighting is kind of changing off and on throughout this video. Because the sun is being an asshole, not wanting to stay in one place. Well, you know what? It kind of fits, fits my mood when it comes to talking about the Karate Kid from 2010 which doesn't even deserve to be called the Karate Kid because there's no fucking karate in it. It's the Kung Fu Kid. And the Fu might as well be F you, as in fuck you. Because if you decide to sit down and watch this remake, you've fucked yourself. So, uh, it's directed by Harold Zwart who uh, is no John G. Avildsen. He's not even a Christopher Kane. Uh, prior to this film, he directed Agent Cody Banks, The Pink Panther 2, A One Night at McCool's. Um, yeah, he's definitely not what you would call a great director. And this is a very ambitious type of film for a director of his caliber. And he was way out of out of his comfort zone here. Uh, he tries to make certain scenes look epic and grand and spectacular, but he doesn't have the skill set to really make them pop. So they just look flat and don't really have the visual uh, punch that a better director would have provided. The fight scenes, even the way that they're shot, are very cartoonish to me almost slapstick in terms of the way that they're shot and showcased by the director and i just felt that visually it, it just did not impress despite the cinematographer's best efforts so the cinematographer is trying to carry the director and he's trying his best to really make this film look good and there are a few shots here and there that Roger Pratt shoots that do look decent enough, but the direction by Zwart is just so uneven that it, it doesn't really ultimately um, leave a lasting impression. So... Yeah, I just I don't think this film is that well directed, especially when it comes to the energy and the flow of the film. Like you'll have these really fast paced, like chaotic, almost parkour fight scenes. And then you'll have really slow, drawn out, just dull shots. And it just doesn't come together. Uh, and I feel that you definitely could have gone with a better director, somebody who's shot more dramas or more action films instead of this guy, the director of Agent Cody Banks. As weak as this film's direction is, it's absolutely nothing in comparison to the script by Christopher Murphy. Now, Robert Mark Kamen is listed as having wrote the story, but that's only because they legally had to put his name on this film and the credits because they copied and pasted pretty much the entirety of his script. 
of the 1984 film. This remake is one of the most egregious examples of ripping off the original that I can think of. This is so pathetic and lazy in terms of its approach to provide a new Karate Kid. Which, honestly, you can't even call it that because there's no karate in this film. Once again, I remind you, there is no karate in The Karate Kid from 2010. It's Kung Fu. But Kung Fu Kid is not an established title or an established franchise. So, uh, we're just going to call it The Karate Kid and hope people don't notice or don't care. And it worked because the film was a huge hit. But I don't think it's worked in the long run because it's not like this film is as well received as the 1984 film or even the second movie or even the third film. So here's what I mean by this script being one of the most egregious examples of ripping off the original when it comes to a remake. Because it's the exact same fucking story from start to finish. It's pointless. Nothing it adds to the table when it comes to anything new makes it stand out on its own in a capable fashion. It's just aesthetics or minor elements. Let's see. It starts out with a young kid, uh, instead of it being Daniel, it's Dre. Instead of it being a white kid, uh, uh, a white teenager, a teenage boy, it's a black kid. And I think they actually changed the age range, so now is more like a preteen, which was... Once again, just a really minor change where they just took the name kid literally in the title and it just makes a lot of the fights in this film, which are surprisingly brutal, really hard to watch because you got like kids who are not even teenagers and not even in high school yet and they're getting in pretty brutal fights and it it, it kind of does feel like child abuse you know in a really strange way it's difficult to watch these kids get involved in these heavily choreographed fights straight out of a, a modern action movie with a with an adult cast it's really just weird and, and there's a disconnect there that is kind of hard to, to, to get around. Also, it, it makes the scenes where Mr. Han, who is the replacement for Mr. Miyagi, where he trains Dre, seem absolutely ludicrous. Because you've got Jaden Smith, who's, a, who's got pipe cleaners for arms and legs, He's a stick figure and he's actually pushing and or or punching uh, uh, Jackie Chan back. That's just absolute bullshit. Where in The Karate Kid, it the 1984 film, you could buy it because Daniel's a, a teenager and Miyagi's an older guy. But here... Jaden Smith is a preteen and Jackie Chan is still Jackie fucking Chan. So it's just, but that's just one of a myriad, a multitude of flaws and crippling moments in this script. So yeah, it starts out exactly the same as the 1984 film. A young teenage boy and his mom move from one place to the next. Instead of it being uh, New York to California, it's Detroit to China. I honestly feel the only reason why it's China is to get the Chinese box office. 
I know that seems shallow, but this is Sony we're talking about, and they definitely weren't shying away from being shallow around this time period. This whole remake is shallow to begin with. So, yeah, from Detroit to China, young teenage boy and his mom, they experience a culture shock. Dre is a fish out of water, just like Daniel was. Dre, just like Daniel, tries to be friends with this girl. And instead of it being Ali, it's this girl named Mai Ying. And Mai Ying had a relationship with this other boy named Chang. They broke it off. And Chang sees uh, Dre with Mai Ying and gets pissed off and fights him. Instead of it being at a beach, it's at a park. So that's the same shit. That's the same plot point right there. And then Dre starts getting bullied by Chang and his fellow members of this dojo, which isn't called Cobra Kai, but it might as well be because they have their master named Master Lee, who is just Asian John Kreese, because he says the exact same lines of dialogue, but in Chinese with subtitles. Strike hard, strike first, no mercy, sweep the leg, all that stuff that you heard Kreese say and teach his students in the 1984 film, this fucking guy does the same shit. So, yeah, you have Asian Crease, and then you have Mr. Han, who is just Mr. Miyagi, but with a different name, because he's also a uh, maintenance worker at the apartment complex that Dre is staying at with his mom. Initially, it just seems like he's just a maintenance guy, and he, he, he doesn't really want to get involved and help Dre out, but eventually decides to help train him, and they form a bond and a connection that's unlikely, just like in the original film. Han even says similar lines of dialogue as Miyagi with the same sort of cadence and, and same attempts to be wise. There's even a couple moments where he just says the same lines of dialogue. I mean, how can you get any more lazy than that? I mean, you have Asian Kreese, who's just saying the same lines of dialogue that Kreese did in the original. Then you have Mr. Han, who was saying the same lines that Miyagi said in the original. Then Mr. Han trains Dre, and he's doing the same thing where he's taking a menial task, like painting the fence or sanding the floor and then turning it into uh, a way to train Dre into uh, learning Kung Fu. But this time around, it's not painting the fence or sanding the floor or things that make any sense. It's picking a jacket up off the ground, putting a jacket on a hook, taking the jacket off, jacket on, jacket off. I'm like, must well be jack off because this fucking writer is jacking off instead of writing it's just jacking off to the first movie for the entirety of the fucking running time so <laughs> jack it on jack it off so yeah you got that whole thing which is beyond asinine and stupid you have this love story that buds between Dre and Mei Ying and the first date that Dre takes Mei Ying to is a fucking arcade. Just like the original film. Just like when Daniel took Ali to golf and stuff. It's the same fucking thing. But this time around they go to an arcade and they play DDR. You even have a moment where Han, with Trey, goes to the dojo 
where Chang is the master student of, just like Johnny Lawrence, and tells Master Lee to leave Dre alone, and they make the same agreement for Chang and his cronies to not fight Dre until the tournament. And if that isn't bad enough, they even tried to play the exact same sympathy card that the original film did with Daniel and Miyagi. Where this time around, Han shares some tragic story that happened when he was younger. I think it's some, instead of it being his wife and his kid died in childbirth, there was something involving a car accident. It, it, I'm just like, wow, how shameless can you be? And then you have the tournament, which has Han not knowing the rules, just like Miyagi. It starts the same fucking way with Dre getting knocked out of the ring and not knowing what to do and getting a warning. It also has that moment where he gets hit really hard in the arm for the first point, just like the original film when Daniel got hit really hard in the arm. And then just like the original movie, he inexplicably, uh, against all odds, starts moving up the leaderboard wins the first match the exact same way that Daniel did in the original film, wins the other matches the exact same way, then gets to the the final fight with Chang, and even that plays out the exact same way. With Dre getting the upper hand early, then Chang fighting back, and playing dirty, including sweeping the leg. You have the scene where Dre is hurt, and it doesn't seem like he's going to be able to come back and, f and finish the fight. And then his trainer and mentor, Mr. Han, does some fucking bullshit and cures his his injury. Instead of it being the the magic hands or whatever, like the the rubbing the hands together in the heat, instead it's like fire cupping be the cupping this film could cup my fucking balls and then you get to the final fight once Dre heals from his injury miraculously he does a special move and wins with a kick to the face instead of it being a crane kick it's the reverse crane kick. It's the cobra or whatever the hell it is. It might as well just be the crane kick, but fucking backwards. <laughs> and of course, it ends with Han looking at, at Dre, and Dre wins the title, and end credits, and I'm like, I already saw... That fucking movie! It's called The Karate Kid from 1984, which is a fucking classic. This is a piece of crap! Fucking kidding me! So yeah, this script is absolute shit. Because 90% of it is just the same plot points. Beat for beat as in the 1984 film. Other than very minor things that are like aesthetic related, uh, the kids are younger, the uh, setting has changed from California to China, uh, there are a couple differences in terms of the training scenes, or how Han is training uh, Dre. But other than that, those little minor differences... It's the same film. <laughs> and that just makes it easily one of the worst remakes of the 2010s. Because the 1984 film is a classic. You can't do that. You can't be better than that. You can't 
imitate that so directly and make a good film. It doesn't help either that this cast is not up to the task. Jaden Smith is incredibly bad. It's terrible. It's just awful. This performance sucks. He tries way too hard to be a mini-me version of his dad, and it's just awkward. And then when he's not trying to do that, he's got no life or energy. He is flat. He's lifeless. He might as well be a, a, a standee. He definitely doesn't have the same charisma or personality that uh, Ralph Macchio brought to the screen. That's for damn sure. And Jackie Chan is trying, but the thing with Jackie Chan is you don't have the extra bonus that you got with Pat Morita's casting, where Pat Morita was an unlikely type of person to be as good of a martial artist or to have these sort of moments. And with, with Jackie Chan, it's something that's just, it's a given like it's Jackie Chan. Like that's not surprising at all that he's a martial arts master. So you've lost that intrigue with the, with the casting. And I don't think he really had a lot of good chemistry with Jaden Smith either. Uh, Taraji P Henson. She's all okay as, as the mom. Uh, although the screenplay really does kind of provide a lot of typical stereotypical, uh, bullshit when it comes to her character. She's a black mom, so she's got to act a certain way. And I, I, I really find that to be uh, problematic is not the right word, but kind of annoying. Uh, Mei Ying, uh, played by Wen Wen Han, not really that great a performance either. Uh, pretty lackluster, and she didn't have any chemistry whatsoever with Jaden Smith. The scene where she's dancing uh, and doing the DDR game at, at the arcade and putting the moves on him was really lame. There was no fire or flame to the two of them being together in that moment. Dre just stands there with a blank look on his face for most of the most of the sequence. Uh, oh, I mean, Jaden. Jaden Smith just stands there with... with with a, a complete blank bored expression on his face. And then even after she dances really well for him and shows that she's definitely interested in him, he just goes, huh, nice. Or what was some nonsense like that? I was just, what? So yeah, those two had no chemistry compared to, uh, Ralph Macchio and uh, Elizabeth Shue, or even Ralph Macchio and um, um, Tamlin Tamita. And, def and, and and honestly, they had worse chemistry than Ralph Macchio and Robin Lively and Karate Kid 3. And then you have Zhen Wen Wei as Wang, uh, Zhen Wen Wei Wang as Chang. I didn't really think that performance was that much of anything either. He was just an angry kid. Uh, he was just a bully. I wasn't impressed I, at all by that performance. Uh, you wrong Guang as Master Lee. What a worthless role that was. He's just, he is. He's just Asian crease. And he's nowhere near as intimidating or fun to watch. And the rest of the cast, completely worthless. Don't even need to mention any of these people. They didn't leave any impression whatsoever. So yeah, the only actor that really delivers like a performance that's kind of worth a shit is Jackie Chan. But Jackie Chan is, is just wasted in this unlikely mentor role. And even in the fights that he gets involved with, he doesn't really 
actually get involved in any sort of actual combat. The whole bad fight between him and the kids, he's just doing a lot of defense moves. He doesn't actually, he makes them fight themselves. Because the age difference has been significantly decreased, so you don't want to have Jackie Chan beaten up on preteens. So yeah, pretty weak cast. Then you have the cinematography with Roger Pratt. It's nice enough. There are some nice looking shots of China and some moments involving uh, uh, Mr. Han and Dre when they're training. Uh, and there's one on the Great Wall of China that, that looked pretty good. But other than that, the cinematography isn't really anything that special either. Neither is the editing by Joel Negron. The score by James Horner is honestly one of his most forgettable of his entire career. I don't remember a single note of it. And it definitely doesn't uh, win in, in a fight with uh, Bill Conti's work in any of the Karate Kid films, including the next Karate Kid. And the music choices were just awful. They were embarrassingly bad. Like the whole song that they had during the tournament. I mean, in the original, you had You're the Best Around. And this, you got some weird, shitty cover of a song that just does not fit the movie at all. Like, I, 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 I got to look it up because I, I could not even believe that this is the song they chose for the tournament scene. Like, it, it did not help that sequence it didn't make the sequence cool didn't make the sequence badass it just it made it even lamer than it already was where the fuck the sound okay the soundtrack there we go uh which one is it oh is it back in black Maybe, maybe it was Higher Ground by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, there's just a lot of really just lame songs from the soundtrack. You even had like Poker Face by by uh, Lady Gaga. Like, why the hell was that in this movie? Um, it was either Back in Black or Higher Ground. You also had Never Say Never by Justin Bieber. <laughs> God. Justin Bieber is on the soundtrack. No wonder this film was shit. But yeah, uh, I don't really know what else to say about it other than... Yeah, the, the pacing is also another huge crippling issue with this movie. Uh, it, it's over two hours, and it really feels like that. It actually feels like over three hours at times because unlike Ralph Macchio's Daniel LaRusso, like Dre, maybe it's the way that Jaden Smith plays this character, but you don't give a shit about this character. You don't like this character. He comes across a little too smug and unlikable and like a little shit. So when he's getting bullied, you don't really have the same amount of sympathy when he's involved in a love story, you don't give a shit about any of that. It doesn't come across as sweet or charming. And then when it comes to him overcoming the odds and winning the tournament, that has no real weight to it either because you don't like this character. The bullies also are completely bland. And yeah, Chang is a jerk. And he's a, a total... Uh, douchebag but that doesn't mean that i like the character the character is incredibly forgettable and not really worth much of note at all and less said about asian greece the better and then the stuff involving mr han you're like i've seen this done better with mr miyagi in the original film and in other films in the karate kid franchise this film is so closely connected when it comes to 
its script and its storyline to the original film that you can't help but comparing it to the original. And each time it does that, it just makes you want to watch the original and reminds you of how much better the original film is compared to this 2010 piece of fucking shit. So, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about the Karate Kid uh, reboot, except it can boot my balls and my butt. And, um, yeah, I, uh, I don't understand why this got as much praise and acclaim as it got when it came out. And I do not get why this is the highest grossing film in the series. And where the hell did the $40 million go? Because this didn't look like it was a film that cost $40 million to make. Did most of it just go to Jackie Chan so they could sucker him to be in the movie? And this definitely did showcase that Jaden Smith is no Will Smith. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, that's my thoughts on the 2010 Karate Kid uh, remake. And as always, thanks for watching. See you later.